Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Sarah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to jump straight to the end pretty much now because I think um, I think we want to get to these questions because they're very useful. If you do take the deck, you'll see some questions we think you should ask to select candidates. You'll also see some examples where we've um, created gamification uh, experiences with other companies. We did some for Comcast, uh, a home safety experience with the AXA. Walmart was about customer service simulations. Um, and we did a spy story mission for Visa, um, complete five levels of the game. And we just wanted to end for you with uh, five things that we think you should remember from this session. The first one is it, it's a course that feels like a game, and I think Sarah's point that the average seat time for that game is 20 minutes is very important because the business doesn't want people playing games if that means they're away from their work for hours and hours. Uh, pull in those competitive elements. Be prepared to cheat to manage the seat time, so be prepared to rig the dice. Don't let the learner get lost in the game. They always need to be able to find their way to the end quickly. And the most important one in a way, gaming is fun, but it doesn't have to be funny. It doesn't have to be silly. It can be serious. So let, let's have a look at some of these questions now. And I'll, I'll, I'll start off with these, and Sarah, you can jump in if you have anything um, particularly interesting there. So let's have a look. So I think we've got a question here from Darren who says, we have bandwidth issues um, with 50 countries where they have operations. Course and file sizes can be an issue. How can that be addressed? Uh, I mean, I think Sarah already spoke to that actually by saying that they, they came up with a, almost a paper-based, very low-tech version of this. The course that, we're looking, that we looked at today in the case study is built with Flash. It would require a reasonably high bandwidth to play. Um, not necessarily broadband, but I, I, if you're taking this out to 50 countries, I'm guessing some of those countries have very low bandwidth. A, a, a lower um, spec HTML version would play a lot better on the bandwidth. And what you might do is you might remove the video and you might replace it with a slideshow or some other way of presenting that information. Um, I think the next question we have is from Janine. Gamification seems easier for HR courses. Uh, what success have we had with technical training? I think the success with technical training um, comes when the technical tra training either requires working under time pressure or working under the pressure of uh, other requirements on your day. So the, the training itself, the technical training, perhaps is not best suited to gamification unless it's valuable to add a time element and against the clock element. So perhaps they have, in, in the case of Comcast, where we've done some gamification with them, they had to wire up the TV to the set-top box to the, uh, you know, the, the Comcast tools, and they had to do that within a certain amount of time because that was the customer expectation. How long did the um, design process, and Gail is asking how long did it take to do the design and, and uh, build process. Sarah, I think you've already mentioned here it's uh, approximately three months end to end. Is that right? Yeah, end to end is approximately three months. Um, that was everything from legal review to beta testing to site testing. That was the whole process. Yeah. And, and so Gaylor also asked what authoring tool or game environment did we use. This was built in Flash. Uh, we've also built games in HTML which, as we mentioned before, have a low bandwidth. But there's also classroom games that can be played, and, and a lot of these games can be turned into a very, uh, almost a paper-based version for the classroom. How do we develop something that can be accessible for persons with visual impairment, i.e. using a JAWS screen reader? Well, interestingly, I don't think that this, this example we've shown you does. It would need to be an HTML course to do that, to work with JAWS. Um, another 508 pieces. I guess the, the quick answer there is it can be done, but you're adding to the development time and potentially the cost, unfortunately, um, to make it fully 508 compliant. Do you set the game up so people play against each other? Yes, and interestingly, the feedback we get most often on these games is where we haven't put in a competitive element between players, um, they ask us if we could. That's something that can be done. Technically, it's possible. You set up a leaderboard and you allow people to submit their scores. It's not always desirable, but it's certainly it's certainly possible. Um, let's have a look. Gail is asking if you're able to see a demo of this game. If if you mean could you take a longer look, then absolutely. If you uh, John will be able to contact you afterwards, and we can make a, a demo site available for you with some some examples. And another question from Gayla, where do they access transcripts? Transcripts are kept separately as documents or as uh, pop-ups on the screen. And whether we're developing in Flash or HTML or 
HTML5, always the transcript is available to the learner. Um, we have another question, would this type of training work on all LMS systems, Saba, Plateau, etc.? And the answer to that is yes. So all of these games, in order to be tracked and scored, they have to be SCORE or AICC compliant. So they would work on 99% you know, of uh, systems. Sorry, so I'm, r I'm rattling through these, so please jump in if you have any, any thoughts. Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So the level of um, audience participants and how many took it, this is from Keith. Hi, Keith. Uh, sorry, I know Keith, that's why I'm saying hi. So Sarah already answered this. All levels within the organization are taking the training. 2,500 employees have taken it so far. Feedback's been very positive. Average site seat time has been 20 minutes. And uh, Mark, a nice comment from Mark saying it's interesting that the learner does not need to leave the main screen. Didn't feel overly complex, made it very compelling. Thank you, that's nice feedback to have actually. Can it be played on mobile devices, iPhones or iPads? Well, this one can't because it's developed in Flash. Uh, other versions in other technologies could be designed for the iPad. That would need to be built in adaptive HTML or in HTML5. Or using uh, one of the tools like Storyliner, though, you might reduce the gameplay if you use one of those off-the-shelf tools. Uh, question from April. Do you have any part of your design process that includes unconnected employees, as in taking the design of the electronic course and turning it into something instructor-led? In this case we showed you today, that's not how it works, but using a game as part of a blend where there's an online component of the game and then there's an in-class component of the game will be a fantastic red thread through a blender program. So that's a great idea. We actually um, had instructors sorry, that take this. Uh, they took this game board and they did it in a classroom setting to some extent, and had the participants, you know, kind of raise their hand to answer questions and such. So we did have some classroom type of settings for this training as well. Yeah, and it's interesting. So some games, uh, if they're designed suitably can be run and, and the whole class can participate. So the facilitator can ask the class for to vote on which door they should open or how to answer the question or which square they should move to next. And it can become a fun group activity if the group is nice and small. So we've only got a couple of questions left. The next one was, um, have we run into adoption issues with certain audiences, e.g. age, education? I, I'd say we have not so much based around age or education level and not so much around the learner audience, but as Sarah mentioned earlier, around some of the leadership audience and the legal compliance audience, convincing them that a game can be fun without having to be silly. I think that's a conversation that we've had several times, and that question came from Tammy. Hi, Tammy. Okay. And the last question I think we have today is how do you handle translation into multiple languages? Is it part of the development timeline? Uh, we handle it exactly the same way we'd handle with any piece of training. The localization comes, in our case, after the uh, piece of training or the game has been launched, or at least has been completed and signed off, and it would go through the same localization and, tra and uh, translation process that any other piece of online training would. So it, it's probably not part of that three months we mentioned for this development, but it would be part of the ongoing development timeline. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to call time on this now. Thank you so much for your participation. The questions were excellent. If anyone would like to see uh, some of the demos of perhaps some of the pieces that we didn't have time to show you properly today, we're happy to set that up. We are also happy to send this deck out to anyone who requests it, and you can do that either through the question uh, facility or by replying to the advert you had to John O'Brien. Thank you very much for attending. It's been a real pleasure. And Sarah, did you have any final thoughts? No, I really appreciate this. It was good to see the feedback from, from the participants on the different polling questions. It helped validate where I thought things were. So thank you. Yeah, thanks everyone. And thanks to John O'Brien for running the and setting up the uh, webinar today. And I hope we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.